Hey now. I'm not supposed to say that. That's Stern's thing. He stole that from somebody else. Hello, everybody. Good evening. It is Wednesday, the eve of NFL kickoff. And we got all your NFL and your cow. Look, look at you, cowboy. Howdy. Howdy, howdy. And we got some broke back, no filter going on over there. I come ready to play. So hey, that was our uh, that was our tribute to Jimmy Buffett and also to uh, Steve Harwell. Um, you ever you ever notice that, or is this just me? And am I crazy? And check this out, Rico. I got you. Want you want you watch me amaze you right here? But music, right? Music is uh, music is the soundtrack of life. Look at you. See, I got two cameras going on right now. We are high tech in this place. Wow. And notice the perfectly placed merch all over the back here. Guys, we do have a shop. We've got hats. We've got shirts. We've got all kinds of stuff. But music is sort of like the soundtrack of your of your life, I, I think, anyway. I mean, is anybody else in the chat? Anybody feel like that? Did Rico finish? Re yes, he did. Uh, he did audition for Brokeback. He did not get the part. He was, um, he was too flamboyant is what they told him for the part in Brokeback. Mm -hmm. But... Um, so Jimmy Buffett first, all right? Jimmy Buffett passed away, and I see all these posts all over social media, all over the news. Jimmy Buffett, Jimmy Buffett, Jimmy Buffett. Look, I, I, I enjoy Jimmy Buffett's music. I was never a uh, Margaritaville junkie, although I was this close to going into business with Jimmy Buffett. Um, so guy, long story short, guy I knew, I was part of an investment group, Big time veterinarian. He's got uh, anyone that's local Simmons Veterinary Clinic over on Lake Worth Road. Uh, he's got a great big door uh, dog boarding facility out back. It's like Caesar's Palace Rico for dogs. Mm. And um, they were going to open one up in Orlando, and it was going to be called uh, Barkeritaville. And Jimmy Buffett was part of this investment group. And uh, the vet uh, was on his way to his house in the Bahamas. He had his own little private, you know, like hopper flight over to get over there, and he decided to fly out sort of in like hurricane hurricane type conditions and uh he never made it and that was the end of my uh business with jimmy buffett but uh, anyway, wow where, where are you, what yeah, an amazing story right. i'm so glad you just filled me in on your potential business venture with jimmy buffett well, what am I, I mean, yeah, they're so there. low golf clap and i just want to clarify one thing um, I actually did get the part for BB2 uh, or BBM2. The writers are actually on strike right now. Um, I'm sure that Snowflake Ron probably already knew that. He's probably been picketing with them out in Seattle or wherever he is. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to make my big screen debut and win us an award quite yet. But fingers crossed. Get that whole AI thing fixed. Well, hey, so Jimmy Buffett died of skin cancer, in case anybody doesn't know that. And that sort of seems appropriate, doesn't it? I mean, you would either, either think like a liver problem or skin cancer for Jimmy Buffett. And uh, so, you know, make sure you put your sunblock on and, and go to your dermatologist at least yearly. And then Steve Harwell died of something called wet brain disease. Yeah, his band's name is Smash Mouth. It's not yeah. that shocking that he died from something called wet brain disease. I'm sure he used his body like a carnival. Um, so well, that's, it's either lack of vitamin B or too much alcohol. So I'm going to go with the alcohol on uh, on Shrek there. I'm going to take the latter on that one. And, you know, he's going to be remembered for all of history. He, you know, one of the things about being a one hit wonder that can never be overstated is you will never be forgotten ever like hey now you're an all-star get your game on go play that will never fade away that will always be in the american lexicon or one of those top hits playlists so shout out to smash mouth for giving us that great 90s classic shout out to the 90s really because what a great decade that was. Second to the 80s, maybe third to the stop 80s, it. And 70s. Just but... stop it. The 80s, the 90s is the greatest decade of all time. 
and it's not even close. No, that's Anybody who watched crazy. wrestling no. knows the 90s was the greatest. Anybody who watched sports knows that the 90s was the greatest. So speaking of the greatest, uh, let's take a look at this here. This happened this weekend, and no one other than I think you kind of saw this coming because you mentioned this last week, but um, – Let's take a look at this. You would think this is straight out of a Hollywood movie. This is not this is not about them. This is about us. This has nothing to do with the team that's opposing us. This is about us. This ain't got nothing to do with the naysayers, the, the unbelievers, the haters, the doubters. This is about us. When we started this journey, we told you it was gonna be trying, it was gonna be tough, but you endured because it's about us. That man next to you is a miracle. That man next to you is a believer. That man next to you is a go-getter. That man next to you is a dog. That man next to you is somebody who wants this thing. That man next to you is somebody who believes. That man next to you is somebody that got to have it today. We ain't got tomorrow. We got now. We ain't got next. We got now. We ain't coming no more. We here. We Give me my theme music. How can you not be motivated by prime time? So oh, easily. Time. I can so easily not be motivated by prime time at this point. He is a walking billboard for himself at all times. When is he when has he not been? Exactly. And I love Prime. And he got those kids ready to play. Get ready for an upset by Nebraska this weekend. Watch the balloon pop at 9 a.m. You know, know, for as much as I enjoy myself some prime, okay, what he had to say in the post game, talking about, oh, no white man want to see a brother succeed. I don't know that he said that. Uh, are I you actually, sure? Yeah, I actually got the clip right here. Okay, well, let's play it for the audience. He basically said, it's getting kind of dark in here. We do we do things that have never been done, and that makes people uncomfortable. When you see a, a confident black man sitting up and talking his talk, walking his walk, coaching 75% African-Americans in the locker room, that's kind of threatening. Oh, they don't like that. But guess what? We're going to consistently do what we do. Because I'm here and ain't going nowhere. And I'm about to get comfortable in a minute. Oh, I can't wait. I'm about to get comfortable in a minute. I can't wait till he gets comfortable. I love yeah. prime time, bro. I always have. What does his skin color have to do with anything? It has nothing to do with anything. So why even bring it up? Like, his story is so great. Like, what's the need to bring up race in that scenario? Like, there's none. It turned me off to prime like that because all the good work that he's been doing now i know he's playing the jesus card he's playing the race card and it's a bit much for me it's all theatrics but that's prime in a nutshell so you're picking nebraska just because you're pissed off at what uh, what he said no i just know enough about hype <laughs> uh-huh and i know enough about a giant roster turnover. Now, his kid can play QB. His other kid hits hard. He's an okay DB. Obviously, that Travis Hunter kid is legit Heisman material because he's a two-way player and he gets it done. But that's why he was the number one overall prospect going in. All mm -hmm. I'm saying is that at the end of the day, they're still Colorado. And even though Nebraska is bad, Mm -mm. Just, I'm not going to be shocked if they lose at home. That's all I'm saying. No, there's no way. These guys will run through a wall for him. And he <clears> obviously, <throat> there was so much. And so I, I've been listening to uh, uh, it's a Beetle and Decker. So they're on uh, Mad Dog Radio every day at 12 o'clock now. It's, it's a new show. Just started a couple of weeks ago. Man, my lighting is bad because my face looks so red. I'm really not this red in person. Um, but I was listening to them last week. 
along with everyone else I listened to, and they were goofing. The over-under on wins for Colorado going in to the season was three. And they were just freaking letting Dion have it. How this is going to be the biggest clown show you've ever seen in your life, and they won't even get one and a half should be the over-under. And I made sure on Monday, on Labor Day, because it was a new show, so I knew they wouldn't get the day off. I had to tune in because I wanted them to immediately come out of the gate and start kissing primetime's rear end. And they didn't. They were all cocky and arrogant about it. And this was Michelle Beadle. She's been canceled. She used to do bull riding. And now she's lucky enough to have a, uh, she was with Max Kellerman and got canceled. And then she was with, Ed, with the NBA and got canceled. And now she's on this dopey uh, Mad Dog Radio. I'm probably the only listener. We have more viewers and listeners than they do. But everyone, everywhere was just, you know, they said there's no way, no how. And all Deion Sanders has ever done is win and win and win and win at every level. And they said, ah, oh, it was Jackson. It, it, it was a small school, blah, 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 blah. He had... He's got no time. Everybody transferred out. Good. Good good thing that all those people transferred out because if all those, I was going to use a bad word, but I can't do that because we're PG-13. If all those idiots didn't transfer out, they may not have won because he was able to bring in people that buy into him. He can push their, but he's just, man, I'm sold, bro. That's fine. One game and you're sold. That's totally okay. I'll, I'll, how many games do you think Colorado is going to win this year? Just out of curiosity. Seven. I'll bet you a thousand dollars right now. They don't win seven games. Thousand bucks. Where where are you keeping? Is the money in your hat right now? Yeah. Okay. Thousand bucks. Thousand bucks. Thousand dollars says they don't win seven games. Mm. What 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 uh, audience? What's the audience saying, man? I got to put my glasses on to see what the, heck the audience is saying. Five. Don Juan says five. The captain says eight games. <laughs> of course he does. <laughs> oh, the Pac-12 is very strong. Yeah, that's that's something you can't say a year from now, though. Okay, and man, anyone that's watched the show since the beginning, if anyone remembers my conversations with Ted Brooks a year ago, I knew nothing about college football. I didn't want to know anything about college football. He convinced me to watch Florida, Florida State. I don't know, it was like New Year's Day or New Year's Eve or something, and it was the longest quarter of my life i watched one quarter of the game i said i will never ever ever do this again and now look um i'm guaranteed i'm betting a thousand dollars on prime time you got it it's a bet i'll take it seven wins i'll take your money and um a few days ago i worked the sidelines at fau we are we are big into man i, I wanted nothing to do with college football and i got dragged in um, FAU, I, I got a few things to say about FAU, but let me, uh, just anybody that's living under a rock or just has been only paying attention to prime time. Here's, uh, here's your FAU update via the local news station here. And then we'll spend a couple of minutes on this. A video is not available. So FAU won, FAU won the game. Uh, it was an absolute blowout, but they played Monmouth who Monmouth is it's kind of like a, uh, pretty much like a high school football team. <clears throat> uh, Monmouth was actually paid, and there's a great article today by Uncle R Uncle Rico on BleacherBrothers.com. If you haven't checked out our website yet, we got content going on every single day. A lot of FAU stuff, so all the local guys. And I see local people watching. I see names I don't know, so hopefully they are local people watching also. Um, FAU, FAU, FAU. What, he here's, look, the game was good. The vibe around the team... The actual players, the coaches, it's it's solid, man. It's positive. It is it is hype. It is electric. But the bummer comes after that. Number one, the game was four and a half hours long. Come on. I mean, you shorten baseball on me to the point where it's two hours because the games are too long because there's no clock in baseball. There's a clock in football. It's an hour clock. But yet the game was still four and a half hours long because TV timeouts – Who's watching this game on TV? There were only the stadium holds 40 thou, and it was about a third full. South Florida is the most shameful sports fan base in the country, period. Whatever. I don't get you got Tom Herman coming in. It's a big deal. The team was not good for years. Now all of a sudden you got a great coach in there. You got some good players. Casey Thompson's a good quarterback. 
uh, uh, Burton is he's on the watch list. Tony, Tony Jackson, Tony Johnson. How can I, rem- how could I forget the dude's name? He's got the same name that I do. Tony Johnson scored two touchdowns. I mean, they, they're a good team and they, they, I mean, I'm, I'm excited for Clemson. I'm looking right past this week coming up because Clemson, Clemson got, yeah. You I, shouldn't. I it's a, re- it's a revenge on. game. They lost last year to Ohio. So I do expect them to win. Um, but you can never look past a team that you've played the year before. So Thompson did what he needed to do. He was efficient as can be, uh, 20 to 25, 83 QBR. But we can't understate what, um, pardon me, overstate what McCammon did. Okay. 13 carries, a buck 25. And he caught, I believe, four balls for like 57. He's a big part of that engine. So I expected to see what I saw, knowing that Thompson already knows Herman's system. But you're right. I mean, they have a lot of hype. And it looks like they got the players to do the job. Now, offensive line, defensive line, there's a few question marks. But they're going to have a competitive team. They're going to be able to put up points. There's no doubt about that. It's can they win the turnover battle and can they not get into the penalty? Now they had, I think three penalties, pretty good, but they did lose the turnover battle and that is sacrilege for coaches. So the only thing that I would criticize about that game really was them losing the turnover battle and not getting enough pressure on the quarterback because they did only manage one sack and the guy threw the ball like 42 times or something like that. So those would be as a coach, if I'm putting my boop coach hat on, those would be the things that I would use as bullets in my magazine, my coaching magazine. Their O line. I don't. I don't know how many times I should know. I have the whole stat sheet. It's amazing when you're uh, when you're media and you get to go in the press box. I mean, they bang the stats out on paper, instantly, mm-hmm. and how they actually do it. Because we, we were down on the sidelines. Because I was a photographer too, and I, I appreciate it. a lot of people told me great pictures. Of course, what can't I do? I'm like, I'm like Coach Prime of photography and reporting and broadcasting and. Um, all of that. I'll, I'll have my own speech next week just for you, Rico, to motivate you. I like I that. <clears throat> In, uh, but you when know, we went upstairs to the to the press box, we went up uh, right before halftime because uh, the cameras and all that crap is getting heavy, and we were already like two hours into the, into the game. Uh, it's amazing. They have two people that just shout out. Uh, tackle like uh, four yards, tackled by, and they throw the number out. And then they have runners that go back and forth and knock all this stuff out and put it in the computer mm-hmm. and they're just blasting out. I mean, at halftime, probably like three minutes into halftime, we got something this thick with every play from the first half. Mm-hmm. So I left Rob and I said, here you go, Rob, start writing. I'm going to go back down and take pictures. And, and that's what he did. Uh, and they had and they had beautiful food, too. It was awesome. <clears throat> I like I like being media. You like being media? I like being media. A lot of work. It's it a lot of work. Is that your first time in a press box? Yeah, it's the first time I've been in a press box. It was. It's eerie, man. It's it's so quiet. Yeah, it's, it's so for quiet. work. Yeah, you know, I learned that uh, very early on. Shout out to Tim Healy and ASU, um, but Cronkite School of Journalism, and then just doing my thing with no filter, uh, being in the ASU press box. It's you know a bunch of heads going to work. You know, it's not a it's not a social scene, that's for sure. And like you said, they pump out stats, boom, 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 you know. Yeah. And some of those stats go right down to the coaches. You know what I mean? Halftime, stuff like that. So it's very important that they have that breakdown. Some of them are going next door to the coaching staff, depending on what coaching staff stays upstairs, who's on the field, et cetera, et cetera. So. Yeah, it, it's really cool. Um, last week was sort of a um, um, learning the etiquette of the whole thing for me. Uh, this week, 
I'll be more entrenched. I'm going to get some video. I'm going to get, uh, you know, some behind the scenes sort of stuff. Um, I just, I didn't, <clears throat> I got no instructions and I had to sort of kind of fake it and say, yeah, 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 I got it. No problem. Give me my, give me my orange vest. And then I got on the field and there was some little girl, I don't know, she's probably a college girl, a high school girl in a vest too. And I'm like, all right, tell me what to do. Where am I allowed to go? She goes, you can go anywhere. She goes, just don't go on the bench, but you can go anywhere. I was like, really? She goes, well, you can't yeah, feel. And um, <clears throat> it was, but I, it, seriously though, my shoulder, I got a bad shoulder and I did a lot of therapy on it this year and it was better. One night lugging all that equipment around for four hours on the sidelines my shoulder's totally blown out again. So I'm sorry gonna, to hear that. Yeah, I'm gonna send I'm gonna send the uh, FAU the bill. Maybe I can get in. They have dynamite facilities, so maybe I can get in one of their whirlpools or have one of their uh, <clears throat> physical therapists work on me at halftime. Yeah, I think that you're that important to the program that they're gonna immediately whisk you away to the hot tub or the whirlpool and put you on the bench and give you a nice rub down. You know, there's, uh, I, I can't, I got some funny stuff, but I, I just, I, I, I can't cross this bridge yet with FAU, but so they have cheerleaders in all four corners of the field. Mm -hmm. And let me just say that there's, um, there's different levels of cheerleaders. And, uh, if that makes any sense and Rob and I were like, wow, really? And it wasn't until the fourth quarter where we made it to this other corner of the field. And we're like, oh, this is where they, this is where they had the real cheerleaders at. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it was, uh, but hey, you know what? We live in the, the age of, uh, and, you know, yes, exactly. So, <clears throat> so we, we got all kinds of exciting stuff going on tonight. FAU will be back out there. We great content guys. If you haven't, and I don't know if I know how to do this, so I'm not even going to try to mess it up right now. But um, share the screen. Let me go. Entires. Share entire screen. All right. Let's go like this. And let's go. If you haven't checked out our website, you've got to go. I mean, we've got, <clears throat> and we've got guys working hard to bang out lots of content. I mean, here, look at this one right by me right there. But FAU, but there's been FAU articles by, by Uncle Rico, by Rob Shume. There's your Gospel of Prime, which was a great, great, great article by Captain Ron. Um, I mean, we're banging out content constantly. You got Uncle Rico. No, it was Barracuda that wrote that one. Your mm -hmm. fantasy breakdown, how to pick your teams, handicapping for the entire year. Um, you know, Super Bowl hair. Oh, this is exciting. Talking about uh, music, the Las Vegas Super Bowl committee wants ACDC for the Super Bowl halftime show. And what it comes down to is the committee has all the say. I just found, I did a lot of research in this and I'm very tight with the Las Vegas. If I did anything right on Radio Row last year, it was get connected with the Las Vegas Super Bowl committee. They came out, they want ACDC. I am sick and tired, no disrespect, but I am sick and tired of Shakira and J-Lo and Snoop and M and Beyonce and friggin' uh, Cardi B and whoever, just bring back, bring, when was the last good halftime show? Snoop and M was actually pretty good, but when was the, I mean, what was the last good halftime show? You really like, oh my God, that was an awesome halftime show. Mm, that was okay. maybe Prince. Um, Did you say Prince? Yeah. Oh, you were so born for that broke back sequel. Hey, call it like I see it. The man can play an instrument, so take that sexual innuendo the way you will. Is that part of your audition? You're, uh, and you know what? This is a PG show right here, buddy. Um, so anyway, coming up right now, uh, or momentarily here, and this, I guess you guys will announce. You guys have an announcement besides picks, don't you? Or is there no announcement? We have an announcement, but we'll do that announcement when it's time. Oh, well, excuse me for that. Yeah, why are you trying to drop the mic before the mic can be dropped, dude? Come on. Yeah, well, We're just uh, going to go into some picks and, you know, maybe pick some winners and maybe pick some winners for the future. That's all. All right, well, coming up, um, coming up next, we got a spot and then uh, a special intro 
for Ted Brooks tonight coming up. So um, we'll be back in a, in a minute with uh, with the sports prophets, Ted Brooks and Uncle Rico. <laughs> You know what time it is, right? It's time for Ain't No Way! These are moments that are sometimes successful, sometimes not. Plain old disgusting, by the way. This is nasty. Now, I know some people like this. College fan, game day, college game day. Dumps mayonnaise, mayonnaise all over himself. Ain't no way! You should be dumping mayo on yourself like that, especially that amount of man. That's just nasty. That's just nasty. Probably smelling like mayo all day. I can't imagine a shower, a bath, the combination of the two, even if a fire, a fireman came and hosed you down. I can't imagine it's going to get rid of that funk, that smell. That's just nasty. But I understand you aren't doing it for attention. I'd have been all over you because of that, or at least from a distance, because I wouldn't want to get the mayonnaise on me. But I'll tell you this. You did that for free tickets to Georgia Clemson game that night. That's what you got for doing that. It's still nasty. There's limits to the nastiness. But I understand. Normally it would be, ain't no way. For that reason, kind of makes sense. Ted way or no way? Way or no way on the mayo, dude, Ted? You guys hearing me? I can. Hear you. <clears throat> I think I'm having some sound issues, guys. Give me one second. All right. I can tell you this. All right. Tell me. He knows Stephen A has cheese between his toes, dude. I'll bet you he walks around in some chanclas and he's got those nasty toenails, the like extra thick keratin, just like. Ugh. So I'm not going to hate on the guy for r rubbing mayo down uh, for some tickets, but that's par for the course for college football fans, man. They are rowdy and insane. Like that's the one thing that brings me back to college sports is there's nothing like college sports for a bunch of adult males who are past their prime to go back and try to relive their young days. You want to see some embarrassments? Let a group of 30 plus year olds go back to their old university to watch a big game and you will see a clown show. Facts. Sounds like a Will, uh, Will Ferrell movie. Ted, you uh you got you got it together now? Yeah, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. You you got to awesome. clean that you got to clean the mayonnaise out of your microphone when you get done with that place, so that it works better. I don't know yeah. what happened there for a second. I think it's cuz I was I was coming in during the commercial. I should have waited until after it. Um but anyway, I'm here. I made it. Thank well, you. Good. I'm I'm going to I'm going to step out. I'm going to let you guys do your thing here. Well, before you do really quick, yeah, you know, yeah, the reason I the reason I wanted to to put that video in is you know, brings me back also, just like Uncle Rico is saying, to why I love college football and like like how I pulled you in, AJ. I mean, that's that's what it's all about. I mean, that video right there is what it is absolutely all about. Hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, the amount of stupid things that I did during my college days, and I had a prolonged college tour. So let's be honest. Uh, Embarrassing moments, ASU, U of A. I mean, one year I wore a flight suit uh, just because I thought I was Maverick, or pardon me, Iceman from Top Gun. Let me sidestep this real quick. I have a question for the both of you, and then we'll get into some picks. But 
the original Top Gun, who is the movie named after? It's named after uh, uh, Val Kilmer. Wow. You are actually the first person that I've ever heard get that correct. Because I'm a freaking genius. Who, who, who do you think you're dealing with here? Sometimes I forget. Like an idiot that's dumping mayonnaise all over my I would have never answered that. College tickets? I have asked this question a thousand times, and a thousand times I have got Maverick. Yes, Ice but, Man. Union Sal's got it right, right there. I said thank you, dumping. Union Sal. It's amazing how brilliant not only I am, but the audience is. Because let's look at the facts, okay? Who won the Top Gun Award? Iceman and Slider. Who came in as the number one overall pick into the Top Gun school? It was Iceman. You didn't see Slider nudging Iceman going, hey, who's that over there? No, it was Goose doing that to Maverick. Iceman didn't care. Nico, I got to stop you for a second. Nobody gives a shit. But I'm gonna Everybody you gives a shit about this topic, dude. Top this is a week. topic that Most is so crime. important. Crime was last week's so important to American values, okay? It should be the topic. It, it should be a question for our uh, Republican and Democrat presidential candidates. But I digress. Guys, take it away. Well, Uncle Rico, how's it going? Oh, I'm just out here living the dream in the sunny Arizona, getting ready for NFL. Got a full week of college football in my belly. But the real question is, is how are you? How did you do this first week? I'm doing well this first week. Uh, Thursday was amazing. Pretty much swept the board Thursday. Had three unders that all covered. Uh, um, Friday laid off. Didn't really like anything that, that was going on Friday. And then Saturday was like a 50-50 day. So overall, a little bit of profit, mainly from Thursday's unders. Um, mm -hmm. But Friday was a 50-50 day for me. Um, Saturday was a 50-50 day for me. Okay. okay. How about yourself? I did pretty well. I'm not going to lie. Uh Doubled the bank and couldn't complain. Uh, made a few good bets here and there, and we'll get into that. Um, but you had me. You had me on our on our head to head. Houston UTSA. It was a tight game, but you had me. Houston UTSA, and and that's the thing. You know, it could it could have went either way, and sometimes the numbers. At the end of the day, it's still gambling. Like, the numbers can do what the numbers do, but it's still a game played between people. Now, the NBA may be a little different, okay? The NBA is obviously rigged and a little bit easier to bet on because we know that David Stern and the refs and the powers that be uh, manipulate the numbers a little bit more for the teams that they want to see win. It's happened. It's been proven. I mean, it it's been proven. People went to jail for it. So yeah, Donahue and just a, a little fun story. So that 2005 Western Conference Finals, or pardon me, Western Conference semifinals with the Suns and the Spurs. Now this was the famous one where uh, Horry threw Nash into the boards, and they ejected Amari and um, I think Rajah Bell for the next game and. Us Suns fans are crying murder, bloody murder. Like, they're throwing it. They're throwing it. And, of course, everybody just thinks you're being a homer. The, the refs aren't really throwing it. Well, the guy goes to jail, writes a book, and then specifically cites that series as one of the series that he threw to make money. So does it make me feel any better? No, because we didn't win the chip. But at least I can be honest with myself when I watch the NBA. And I still do, like an idiot, but hey, I love sports. Yeah, I could do a whole show about what sports have a little a little bit of shenanigans going on. I mean, you look at uh, 
you look at NFL, you know, they got rid of Tagliabue for a reason and got Goodell in there for a reason. But but I digress. Let's <laughs> let's talk about college football. Um, one thing I wanted to add really quick to the the Coach Prime talk is something that people really aren't talking about. So everyone's focused on Coach Prime. Everyone's focused on what Coach Prime did, which is great. I like him. Wasn't crazy about the race thing, but besides that, I like him. What's no, what no one's talking about is the fact of what this transfer portal is doing. He just took advantage of it. He just used it to the max and had the most transfers. But let's look at another team, Texas State, with their new head coach, G.J. Kinney. He's like 34, 35 years old, young guy, former NFL quarterback. He used the transfer portal also, big time, I think second. And he will be. Baylor. They were 26. That was actually one of my uh, losses on Saturday. I had Baylor. Texas State came in and, and beat them outright as 27 point or 26 point dogs. Yep. And let's not forget my team, ASU, who's actually, I believe, number two in the transfer portal and has the youngest coach in college football, and that's Kenny Dillingham. We had a major roster turnover uh, because obviously Herm Edwards got fired and then we got sanctions. Now we're not going to be in the bowl. So we had a huge, huge roster turnover. Now, the product we put out on the field was not as good what Texas State and Colorado did. Colorado and Texas State showed what this transfer portal era of college football is going to be. And it's the Wild West, man. Like, you can you can rebuild your team like that with talent, with playable talent. Because look at a team like Kansas State. You know, there's certain teams like Utah and Kansas State that are always competitive. They never have big recruiting classes, but they get players that buy in to the program. And they always get max potential out of their players. I don't know if it's because of the way they train, they coach, but they always progress their players well. And for these transfers that can come in, if they buy in right away, you can have immediate success. And I think that will be an argument. You know, we're seeing early success right now. Will it last? That's the question. Excuse me. That's the question that, will be answered at the end of this year. I think it'll last, and I think that uh, looking at one more, and then we'll, we'll get into the picks, but looking at one more coach that didn't, that refused to even touch the transfer portal, his team got beat pretty bad by Duke, and that's Dabo Sweeney at Clemson. He said, nope, not for me. I'm not partaking in those shenanigans. Well, maybe you have to partake in those shenanigans yeah. right now in 2023. <laughs> You have to. I mean, look at Notre Dame. Notre Dame, and I'm a Notre Dame fan, so I've seen some of the good and the bad of Notre Dame. I can't remember the last time. I think it was Brady Quinn, the last time I saw a quarterback that was that handsome and that good. Like Sam Hartman coming over from Wake Forest, they look so good. Now, granted, they haven't played – top tier teams they played uh hbcu and navy in dublin ireland so this week we'll see against nc state an acc team a talented team they're usually mid-tier about eight to we'll say six to eight win team usually we'll say eight but his transfer from wake forest to a team that is already pretty established, I mean, we look pretty good. His efficiency is bananas. So I think you have to take advantage of the transfer portal. Look at FSU. You know, Johnny Wilson, ASU. Brian Kelly and LSU, who did they take? Jaden Daniels from where? ASU. Yeah, I, I and I, and I, and just the Pac-12 right now. I, I, you're on the West Coast. You're a West Coast guy. Pac-12 is amazing. It's a shame what's happening there. You know, as someone who works pretty much all day on Saturdays, college football Saturdays is my business. 
you know, sometimes the only time I get to really sit down and watch a full game are those late night Pac-12 games. Obviously, the teams aren't going anywhere, but you're always guaranteed those great games. And this year, they're looking better than ever. You got Michael Penix at Washington. You got Utah winning without Cam Rising, which really surprised me. You got Bo Nix at, at Oregon. And of course, uh, you have Caleb over at USC. And so it's just such a cool conference right now to watch. Pac-12, I love it. Don't um, forget uh, Uwe Ugale. Yeah. Uwe Ugale, yes. that old Clemson moving over to Oregon State. I mean, Oregon State, we're talking about Oregon State now. And the Pac-12 is going to be completely dismantled, dude. We're like organ donors for the rich. It's a shame. It's a shame, but, you know, life must go on. You know, let's get into uh, some 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 picks here. You want to start it off? Absolutely. Give it to me. All right. Friday, we've got one game. No game Thursday because, obviously, the NFL. Folks, this is college football we are going to talk about first. Okay? You cool with that? Yeah. Always right. start with college football. Chronological order, baby. Love it, Tonto. All right. We've got Illinois at Kansas. Kansas is favored three. 58 over under. I like Kansas. I like Kansas to cover three. What do you okay. think? And the I, reason so, being is because I like their offensive system a lot. And I really like their quarterback. He plays that system really well. Last year he came in as, I believe, a sophomore. Now he's a junior. Another year in the system. So watch out for Kansas. They are going to be a team that puts up points. And they will stay in games because of the points that they can put up. Yeah, I mean, Kansas, I don't hate the pick. They haven't covered a spread in their last five games. And Illinois is 8-1 and one against the spread on the road in their last nine. That being said... That being said, there is line movement towards Kansas. So the line opened up at one. It's now minus three Kansas. Mm -hmm. One thing that you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to watch that line. You're going to want to watch it all the way to Friday. It's only Wednesday right now. Watch it all the way to Friday and see what it does. Now, I got a question for you. Let's say you got in early and you played the one line is that a good bet if you got in early and you played the one line no matter what happens in that game that is value yes okay that is value so whenever you bet a game and let's say you bet the game on friday and on saturday or maybe saturday morning and by the time saturday night comes the lines move two points even if you lose you got value it's like in poker you know you get Aces in against Kings, right? Let's say you're playing Texas Hold'em. If you get aces in against Kings, yeah, what is it? You 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 win 80% of the time, something like that, 82. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you're, you're going to lose 18% of the time, but you still do it every time you got value. So that, that's yeah. what I would compare it to. You win 80% of the time unless you're me. Uh, when I go, <laughs> I, sit up, I always crack. So um, let's see. That was just me getting the – Friday bet out of the world. Now, I have a few games that I do want to ask your opinion about. I have okay. three games that I love. Absolutely think they're locks. But the first one I want to talk about is Nebraska visiting Colorado. Colorado's favored by three. Who do you like? So you got two new head coaches. You got Matt Rule after uh, Frost got fired over there. Who I, I always, so I'm a UCF guy. So when Frost left UCF to go to Nebraska, I did not wish him well. And I'm, I'm kind of happy. You should have stayed at UCF, built that program up more. But you jumped to go to Nebraska and you failed. Get it. But but um, that being said, so you got these you got these these two new head coaches. I'm on the bandwagon right now. You got NFL caliber players. I'm sold on the transfer portal. You got 
the quarterback, his son. I looked at it. I, I didn't know what to think because I didn't really watch those Jackson State games, so I didn't really know what to think about Shador. And then I saw what he did, and I'm not betting. It's not a bet for me. So, you know, my money's not going on either side, but I'm not betting against Colorado in this game right here. Now, that being said, they have some tough games because just as we were saying, the Pac-12 is tough this year. They have some tough games up against very good teams. I don't think they have any chance of winning. I don't think they're going to pull an upset against uh, – I think they play USC, right? I don't think they're going to pull up – uh, nothing like that, nothing crazy, but I think they can handle Nebraska. Yeah, I. all signs point towards Colorado winning. I just like the human element of it. You know, Prime shows up when the lights are the brightest. Now, all the hype was going into that game. TCU ranked in the top 25. Played in the national championship last year. First game to put a product out on the field. Big win. I could see what we see in inexperienced teams is a letdown. So I also don't want to touch this game, but I'm kind of favoring Nebraska. Okay, fair enough. I think that there is going to be that human element. And the human element is not a solid reason to ever make a bet, but it's just how I feel. I think that Colorado is going to have a letdown. And if every if everything doesn't go as planned, I'm interested to see how Prime is able to rally the troops if they, let's say, get down early. I think he'll rally them. He's not, he's not the type of guy that likes to lose. He'd probably rather be back in the – in the studio doing TV shows, if that were the case, he's he, he's coaching to win. He's not coaching. Some of these guys, they're mediocre coaches, and they're happy because he they get the paychecks and they have. But he has enough money. He he can go back on TV if he wants. He's only going to coach if he's winning big time. So that's how I feel about him. Um, one game that I'm looking at big time is Ole Miss versus Tulane. I'm all over this game. Are you? Is this on your list? That's my lock. Okay, well, let's see here. I'll, I'll tell you who I'm with first. First of all, this team, these two teams over the last uh, century have played each other, I think, 30 or 40 times. But they, in the last 12 times they've played each other, Ole Miss dominates. They've won um, all 12 of them, including in 2021 by 40. They're an SEC team. Jackson Dart. What better name for a quarterback than Jackson so Dart? Because the kid throws darts. And they sm- – listen – I know these first week games, they pay teams to come in, right? So they played Mercer. I get it. But they destroyed them 73-7. to And just a, a quick reference to FAU, in my opinion, that's how FAU should have beat Monmouth. I'm a little bit concerned for FAU, the fact that they only beat Monmouth by 20 and they let Monmouth put up a, a decent amount of – how many points did they let Monmouth put up? I think they put in somewhere in the 20s. Yeah, that's not that shouldn't happen. They should win a game like that, seventy-three to seven. So th- that's how that's how it's done when you're playing a team that you pay to come a- and play at your stadium. And the thing with Tulane is, yeah, they scored a, a ton of points, but they they had a bunch of penalties. They're very sloppy. Had some turnovers, and they were playing a, a fairly weak team also. And they lost a lot of players to the NFL because Tulane covered a lot of spreads last year. But that team that was covering spreads last year lost a lot of players to the to the NFL. I love Ole Miss minus six and a half. Yeah, this one is a slam dunk if there ever was one. I mean, Jackson Dart came over from USC. Personally, I thought that's where Spencer Rattler should have went to have Lane Kiffin kind of rebuild his draft draft stock. Um, but Ole Miss is going to be a tough out this year for any team let alone a small conference team like Tulane. I mean, they beat the bricks off of Mercer last week. And not every team does what they're supposed to do when they pay these teams to come in. Like, look at ASU. We played Southern Utah, and we barely won 24-21. to Now, Ole Miss is way more talented than ASU. That's just an example of teams that don't do what they're supposed to do. Like you expect 
and Ole Miss to do what they did, and they did it, which is why I feel comfortable going into the Tulane game, knowing the history that they beat the bricks off them, knowing that they're in the SEC. Like, I think this is a slam dunk lock bet free money. I agree, and and, and the icing on that cupcake is going to be Lane Kiffin loves – He's. I was trying to think of the word, but I know AJ made it a PT show now, but Lane Kiffin's a uh, – He's an SOB, and he loves running up that score. So he's going to run it up, I think. Um, and then my other my other big pick in college, and then I guess we can move on to whatever you have left, is Mississippi State. I won't stay on it long, but I just don't think Arizona has much there. 126 defense, um, giving up 37 points a game last year. And the sharp money, if you, if you have the ability to track sharp money, which we do sometimes on certain games, is all over. Um, Mississippi State, the line, if you can get it at nine, I think it's a good play. I think it's going to be 10, 10 and a half by Saturday. Wow. Okay. So you got Mississippi State pounding U of A. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and Mike Leach passing away. I think they're going to play hard to play tribute to him all year. Okay. Okay. Uh, I did not have that one on there, but I looked at it and – I keep hearing all the hype from the UA quarterback. I think that got in my head a little bit. I do agree. Uh, Mississippi State is going to win that game easily. Uh, I just hope that whenever I bet on U of A, they tend to do something late in the game to kind of ruin my bets. So I tend to stay away from certain teams that I know hate me, uh, and they are one of them. So uh, I got – Two quick college bets I want to run by you. Oregon at Texas Tech. Oregon is favored six and a half. I like Oregon for that one. I think another example of a team doing what they were supposed to do in week one, beating the bricks off of the team they played. Texas Tech, good team, will be competitive at their place. I just think Oregon is able to cover a touchdown. And then lock it in. ASU, Oklahoma State, Oklahoma State is favored three and a half. They're covering easily, easily. ASU is terrible. And we still have, uh, what's his name, Rashaba, our, our, our freshman, true freshman quarterback playing. Drew Pine's not going to be back. We're going to get rolled. And I would highly suggest people to bet on Oklahoma State covering that three and a half. I don't have anything on that one, but I was on Oregon. This is interesting. So I have a team that, that helps me out. I have, a, I have a partner, and the team actually pulled me off this game. They said Oregon should be favored by a lot more. Looked a little trappy, a trap line. If anyone doesn't know what that means, it's when Vegas makes a line, something that seems too obvious, so people slam it. Um, so, yeah, my team was saying Oregon – Oregon should be favored by a little bit more. They should be maybe a maybe a nine or a ten favorite in that game. So it's a little trappy that line. Ooh, okay, okay. Something to look out for, guys. If you're little if you're betting on sports, line. look out for the trap lines. Vegas. All right, let's let's league. get through. Uh, let's get to some NFL Week One. This is a tough week. For, you know, it's tough to make Week One predictions. You want to start again? Yeah, absolutely. Let's start Thursday night. We got Detroit visiting Kansas City. Kansas City is favored by four and a half. I got this one as lock. KC blows them out of the water. I watched what they did to the Cardinals last year. It wasn't pretty. I do like Detroit, but I don't think you can lose somebody like Jamal Williams, who is a, a the heart. He was the beating heart of the Lions, and I'm interested to see – how they respond to not having that locker room presence. I like Jameer Gibbs, but they lose Swift. They lose Jamal Williams. I just don't see a scenario where Kansas City doesn't win by double digits. Their best defensive player and their best offensive player could potentially be out in this game, Kansas City. Obviously, they still have Mahomes. But I think Jared Goff, I mean, a lot of people are behind him this year. I think he's going to do something. Uh, I... The, the line movement, once again, shows the Lions. Uh, if you could get the Lions at six or seven, which it's tough, it's getting pretty low and scary. 
But I think the Lions at like six is a good pick. So I, I think I'm going to – I hate going against Mahomes. I wouldn't make it a big bet, but I think I'm going to go against you on this one and go okay. with the Lions because of the two injuries that KC has. And I think J- Jared Goff's going into the season with a little bit to prove. Okay. Okay. I only have one other big bet for the NFL this week. I have a couple leans, a couple things I'm looking at, but I have one big bet, and I have a really cool stat trend. Number one overall picks, quarterbacks, in the last 14 times that they have played in a week one game, they are 0-14 straight up and 1-13 against the spread. So I'm on the Falcons in this game against the Panthers with Bryce Young starting in his first game. Uh, I, I'm on the Falcons' money line, minus 145. I'm just taking them to win the game. I'm not saying that Bryce Young is not going to be great one day. This stat has nothing to do with the quarterbacks, and it has everything to do with the fact that they're getting drafted by teams that are an absolute mess. Only thing that scares me a little bit is um, Desmond Riddler on this uh, Falcons team. He's only had four games, not a great showing in the four games he played last year. But he kept his turnovers to a minimum. I think he had no interceptions in those four games. So that shows me a lot. Um, yeah, you know, the, the Falcons are a little bit of a mess. You are right, Captain Ron. But so are the Panthers. They are not a mess at all. They are they are a team on the rise. Okay. Arthur Smith is a great coach. Came over from Tennessee. Okay. Mariota. Now, that was dysfunctional. Mariota himself is dysfunctional. But the way he put in Ritter, I like that. I've been a big Desmond Ritter fan. I wanted the Cardinals to take him. I think that he's going to be the next dude in the NFL. I see him at least having an elongated career. And I love that pick in that same mentality, Jacksonville, Indiana. Jacksonville's favored five. I took Jacksonville because of the same thing. I don't buy the Anthony Richardson hype. I think he is going to be, whenever you see him, bet against him. He wasn't that good at Florida. He's not going to be that good in the NFL. I don't know what people see in him other than his athleticism. Jacksonville covers five in Indy. Okay, I like it. Couple other leans. I'm leaning Bucks. Uh, I think that you know the Vikings very overvalued this year. Going to be overvalued against the spread. They're six point favorites in this game. I think that's too high. I think they win the game, but I think by a field goal. Um, the you know, and this is a numbers pick. So for me, it's always like players and emotions versus numbers. You're going against Kirk Cousins and, and Justin Jefferson, who I took in number one in my in my draft. Um, but I, my heart says. Vikings, but I think the numbers show the Bucks in this one. Mm, interesting. I think Baker is going to make a fool of himself, and I think the Minnesota covers six. I hate those high picks, but it, it also feels like a teaser putting it at six, knowing that, oh, they don't have to cover. If they win by a touchdown, I make my money. Um, it sounds like feels like a trap bet, but I would lean more towards Minnesota personally. Minnesota is one of the only teams that had the type of record they did and had a negative uh, point differential, so it's pretty interesting. Interesting fact. All right. Well, if you're listening to this portion of the Bleacher Brothers show, I would take what I say with a grain of salt, and I would listen to my boy Tonto over here who knows his stuff, okay? I'm talking – he probably is going to make more money than me by handfuls. So I have my opinions, but I would take his word first. Just a disclaimer for the audience. We, we, we put a good amount of work into this. Um, I'm not, I'm a humble guy. We put a good amount of work into this. We do well. Um, Which I'll is never, exactly why people should listen to you. Always I'll follow the again. humble man. Always follow the humble leader. One thing I will say, though, is when it comes to the big bets, I always wait to see what the Lions do. So I'll be betting. Like the Saturday games, I'll be betting on Saturday. Hey, Ted, can I, can I bring you? Because you, you, know you know how lucky I got last year on the NFL with my locks? 
I was waiting for this part. I'm I was coming. waiting for the AJ lock of the week. I'm coming with, with you two. killed it last two. year. I, I love them. I, I got to go against you. I, I like the Vikings to win okay. by about 20. So I, I think the Vikings minus six is what I got here. And I love Seattle. I mean, Seattle is just going mean, to. The Rams are The Rams are a wreck. I love Seattle. The Rams Seattle. might be the dysfunctional team. They might be the dysfunctional team. Well, you know, they can't relate to the older players, can't relate to the younger players. You guys were talking about, yeah, you, you were talking about this last week on the show with, um, with, uh, with, was it, uh, Stafford's wife? Yeah. Is that who it was? Yeah. Stafford's wife was saying that there's a communication issue with him and the players. That, that's just weird. That's got to make it awkward in the locker yeah. room. Well, she came out this week and she said that she regrets. Uh, telling anyone that. Yeah, well, she still told it. She still told it. <laughs> yeah. Vikings in Seattle. Those are the AJ. Two of them. Week one, two of them. Right there. Those two the of them. And before we yeah, move I agree on, on Seattle. Uh, before we move on to the next portion, we did want to announce me and Ted Money over here are going to be doing a betting show on Thursday evenings. Thursday evenings, we will be making you money. Or I should say, he will be making you money. I will be asking him how I can make money. So if you have an interest in making money, I would highly suggest checking it out. It's going to be on Thursdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. That's 5 p.m. my time. Dial it in. You're going to get college football. You're going to get NFL, and you're going to get whatever else we feel like betting on, whether that be heads or tails, dreidel, paper, rock, scissors. It could be a whole plethora of things. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just going to be what we just did, just a little bit extended, and it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to get a lot of good picks, and I think it could go either way. You know, these early picks, things change in two or three days, so you you, you never know. You could you could outpick me in this show, but we will see. And I had an idea. Whoever has the worst record, we should do that Mayo video. But it should be that person. Oh, be like a bad wow. boy. Oh boy, I'm setting myself <laughs> up for that one. I will. Uh, I'll commit to it. Uh, I will 1,000 percent commit to it because, unfortunately, I know I will be the one doing the Mayo douse, but. You know, I got to start talking with more confidence and believing in my fantasy logic. So, you got it. Best picker this year gets to douse the other with mayo. Yeah. Yeah. Or we could do it on the – or maybe we uh, maybe we meet up at the Waste Management next year. Do you ever go to the Waste Management? Oh, my God. Don't even get me started on the Waste Management. Oh. Why the waste management? Why not meet up in Vegas at the Super Bowl? Because well, we talk about. The, I've always wanted to go to the waste management. It's, it's been. It's a thing. It's a thing hole, I need. It's on my bucket list. Sixteenth hole. There is. If you're a real sports fan and you haven't been to the sixteenth hole at the waste management, you haven't been to a sporting event. There is nothing like that in golf. There's few things like that in sports. It's insane. Yeah. It is absolutely. I've seen videos. It's, it, it's a time of your life. So, hundred percent down for that. Uh, if we need to, we'll get you to Vegas when we're there for Super Bowl week. Write that down, everybody. Bleacher Brothers, Super Bowl week, Las Vegas. We'll take care of the check. Don't you worry. All right, hey, we got to move on. Ted, where where can everybody find you? Besides One more thing, AJ. I think my next goal is to get you into golf, like I got you into college football. You can oh, find boy. me at Instagram, the underscore profits underscore pick. No S on pick. TikTok. I just started rolling with TikTok. Just got my first 2,000 view video. My buddy inspired me. He gets like 50,000 views of video at the Sports Profits. Same business as me. And YouTube. YouTube.com slash at the Sports Profits. Go to all of them because we post a pick on YouTube that's not on Instagram. We'll post a pick on Instagram that's not on YouTube. So make sure you check them all out. Ted, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but you didn't get me into college football. Media credentials did. <laughs> 
Welcome to my bookie. You're ready to create an account and start making money. And we're here to help. And remember, you can get a bonus of up to $1,000 on your first deposit. First, you'll review your selected bonus. You can change your bonus or decline your bonus. Next, you'll select a deposit option. Enter your deposit amount and click deposit. Fill out your card info. You can also edit your billing address if you need to. And then click confirm deposit. Now you're ready to bet. Just go to mybookie.ag, visit the sports book, click on your bet, and input the amount you want to risk or win in the bet slip. You can also view how much money you have left in your account and review your pending wagers. Yes, it's that easy. Just remember, at MyBookie, you play, you win, you get paid. Rico, I got I got two to one odds that you're you're gonna be covered in Mayo, and uh, who knows? Maybe we should throw some other stuff in there besides just the Mayo, relish, like tomato, relish. Uh, we should you know hot dogs. We should be able to throw hot dogs at you while you're covered in Mayo. I mean, this would be a great Radio Row thing. This has to happen on Radio Row. Absolutely has to happen on Radio Row. That sounds good. <laughs> All right, hey, let's 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 welcome tonight's panel for our discussions and roundtable, and we we gotta have some sort of segment name to this. But you guys all know Captain Ron. He writes, he broadcasts, he um, he does a lot of things, uh, and he's a, he's a Rams fan. And you I'm know, trying not to picture Uncle Rico drenched in mayo, salsa, or ceviche for that day, for that matter. I. I'm, I'm trying not to have that thought in my head. Too late. Ah. And we've got the quarterback of everyone's favorite semi-pro team. What, what y'all may not know, for those of you that are not as loyal as I am, of course, why should I be loyal? Do I have my helmet yet? No. Do I have my jersey yet? No. A uh, chef Tom comes in wearing Capo's gear all the time. I'm like, where'd you get that? Oh yeah, the coach gave it to me. Um, but anyway, the Capos had a eight man summer season where they absolutely kicked butt, huh, Brent? Yeah, we definitely did good. Uh, fell short in the playoffs though, but great learning experience. Got a lot of new players coming in for eleven man. Scored a bunch of points. It was a fun season. Uh, yeah, big, big. Gotta be honest. Big. I think so. I got. I, I gotta be honest. Um, he AJ is the one who actually turned me in. Turned me into like this Capos fan. So like, I'm actually looking forward to seeing to actually seeing some video highlights from like the Nets game. And I'm a. I'm gonna be realistic. Like, I'm actually excited for you guys this Nets season. I'm gonna be legit on this one. And I'm more excited about this one as he was as Rico was about wearing that god awful 10 gallon dollar store Stetson hat that he's sitting here throwing on. You right? You talking talk about the Wish version Jason Aldean? Yes. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Not everybody can pull that off. Hey. <laughs> fashion doesn't take a day off, gentlemen. Now I, I do have to even see like Jason Aldean. Uh, quiet. Pause the what? audience. I do have a question for the coach. Now you were playing 8 man, correct? Correct. Full contact? This summer. This summer. Full contact. Eight man. Full tackle. Um, so the way eight man works down here, it's outdoors, arena rules. So it's uh, 60 yards long, 40 yards wide. Uh, extremely fast paced. Clock doesn't stop. And it's, it's an all out battle the whole time. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, coach, out of that. I coached eight man. So here in the small districts, we can only get X amount of players. So. I found it interesting having the diagram eight man from 11 man because it's a different game, you know, True. on the line, the way you can set up blocks, the way you run your routes, et cetera, et cetera. Do you like eight man better than 11 or do you like 11 better than eight man? I like 11 man better than eight man. It's traditional football. Um, eight man is like you said, you have to diagram out, you know, route trees and, different types of motions and things like that. It, it, it gets confusing for players. 
uh, especially for our guys that transition from 11 to eight man. Um, yeah. It's it, but like I said, it's it's a fun season. You know, it was more of a go out, have fun for the summer, stay in shape, and and you know push us into an 11 man season. Right so, on. It's summer camp, but you were a kid and you were out of school, but you still sort of went to camp. And I mean, that's how I that's how I picture it. You guys are just out there, no pressure, right? There's no pressure, ain't man, is there? Exactly. It, it, it's more of a just do your thing, have fun, whatever happens, happens. Is it pretty much the equivalent of like you know going to work normally, like you know the normal season, or is it more of you get a little bit more intense when it's eight on eight versus eleven on eleven? The game itself is a lot more intense just because of the, the pace of it. It's so fast. Uh, you tend to have bigger hits from it. Uh, when it comes to preparation, though, it, it's a lot more lax because you have, well, for one, you're dealing with less players on a roster. So you have a lot more time for one-on-one -on -one instruction, uh, easier to kind of keep an eye on different position groups. Um, and then game planning, it, it, it's kind of out the window with eight man. You know, there's, at least down here, there's not much film on the teams that we played. A lot of them were brand new teams or they were 11 man teams that transitioned into eight. So they had to learn, they had that learning curve going on just like we did for the most part. We actually had a little bit of a leg up because we played it last year. Um, but yeah, I mean, absolutely fun. We went uh, four and two in the regular season and lost in the playoffs to the team that's in the championship now. So is it yep. true that your eight-man team was so good that you're just taking those eight into the eleven-man season and you're going to play eight against eleven? <laughs> Receiver-wise, yeah. <laughs> now, now something else about the coach. The coach is going to be our on-location correspondent for this week's Monday night football game. Not in New York, contrary to what everyone may tell you. The Jets play in New Jersey, and he will be there when the Jets take on the Buffalo Bills on Monday night. I can't get his birthday. I, the, well, my birthday is September 9th. It's Saturday. Okay. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. I have the early birthday to you, number one. Number two, is that like a New York thing, Jersey thing? Because I've never really understood that, that whole rivalry thing you guys got going. You guys get mad at New York oh, teams. What, for... what it is, so what it is, right? So so the the Giants, this is my whole lifetime that I can remember, the Giants played in Jersey. So did the Nets for a long time. And when the Nets, and now you go back to like 70s, 80s, the Nets were never a good team. True. The newspaper would list them as the New Jersey Nets when they sucked. And then if they played good, suddenly the newspaper would report them as the New York Nets. That is a true story. That is an honest to God true story. It was never cool to be from New Jersey until the Sopranos came out. And then when the Sopranos came oh. out, everybody decided that, all right, you know what? We can be from Jersey now. Yeah, but the problem is, is that you say you're throwing in Jersey and now all of a sudden they're saying everybody in Jersey drops an F-bomb every three seconds. No, that's just, that's how you're brought up. In some, some places, you go to kindergarten, they teach you colors and tying your shoes. And in Jersey, they teach, they show you George Carlin's seven words that you should never say, and they teach you how to write them and spell them. And so anyway. George Carlin was practically a religion in Jersey. No, you know, he is. Um, Brent, have you seen the Netflix documentary Quarterbacks? I have not. All right. Well, we're going to, you're going to hang with us for a couple of minutes on this one. You okay. want to see this. So actually, Uncle Rico turned me on to this. I, I saw it as I was scrolling through Netflix, and I'm like, nah, you know what? I want no part of that. And then Rico said, hey, you got to watch this. It's really good. And he told me, he lied to me. Maybe he didn't know. He's like, there's three episodes. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Or eight, I think, or nine or something. And I, I watched it all in about a day and a half. Uh, the show is phenomenal. And for those who haven't seen it, just so that we can kind of set this up and spend a couple of minutes on this, Mm -hmm. I have the actual trailer of the show right here. So. Let's go upstairs now and read, okay? Why does the NFL have so many rules against hitting quarterbacks? A quarterback throwing a pass is wide open for dangerous hits. An injury to the quarterback can sink a team's entire season. Damn it! I'm going to take you out of here. No. Hell no. I'm good. 
This is about as close as they'll ever get to seeing what it's like to be a quarterback in this league. I dedicate my life to football. All day, all day. I love to compete. I love the relationships that come with that. I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. He's four. He's down. Oh, I would have gotten up. Everybody sees the game days, but they don't see the day-to-day grind. Every season's a roller coaster. Hey, you get one opportunity a week! Marcus will keep it and score. Let's go! It's really nice to get him away from football and spend time with our family. Oh my gosh, he made it the first try. How many did y'all make? I can do that one. I said quick. He's kind of a basic guy. We call it dad style. If ever I do go out of my shell, it seems to become a thing. Dive Let's in. go. This was the turducken. You get one game plan one game, then a completely different game plan the next. That's a good ass oh, hit, though. Oh, Great play, dog. Oh. I know what I signed up for. You just gotta be able to buck with your chin strap up. I'm here all day. I'm here all day. I'm here all day. My instinct has always been, I'm going to be the guy to make the play. And I think that kind of gets me in trouble. Let's go out there and find a way to drag our ass across the finish line. Mahomes is in trouble, scrambling to his right. I said, wait. Gets off the hip. And the first and late touchdown! I'm like that. Woo-wee. Mahomes would be a great dude to have on your eight man team. You know that? He would be. Hey, honestly, he if good. we're going to be honest, my son would be honestly going to have your eight man team too. So, so this show, and, and for anyone that's watching that may not be a gigantic football fan, it doesn't make a difference. This show is, it's not necessarily about football. Um, this was one of the best sports documentaries that I think I've ever seen put together. And I know mm. that when, when we talked to Ron about coming on tonight, I said, look, we're going to talk about this. And uh, you got to go watch it. And all he did was text me like every single episode. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is great. This is awesome. And <laughs> it was just, it was a really good show. Can't so, confirm. L- let me ask this. And, uh, Coach, you can just kind of look pretty for a couple of minutes, and then we're going to get to all of our NFL <laughs> predictions, surprises, disappointments, everything coming up. But uh, uh, Uncle Rico. You know what? You should have to change your name to Uncle Mayo also after this happens. But um, Uncle, Uncle Mayo, Uncle Salsa, Uncle Rico. What 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 was it that surprised you most as you watched this documentary? Was one thing that you took away that you were like, "Oh my God, I I, I had no idea." Well, first of all, you're welcome. Uh, <laughs> you bit on the three episode that I told you about. There's a reason I told you it was three, because I knew you'd be hooked after two. So, once again, you're welcome. Uh, For anybody who loves football, it's exactly what you want to see. And while I may have my disagreements from time to time with Captain Ron, uh, him loving the show as much as he did, knowing how much of a football aficionado as he is, Uh, lets me know that this was a pretty good show. And I expected nothing less from Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning was the EP for the show. And my one big takeaway was how much it takes to be an elite quarterback in the NFL. The work that Mahomes and Cousins put in, like they don't show it in the trailer. But you've got Cousins, who is meeting with a sports psychologist. He's got electro nodes to, like, train his brain. He's got all sorts of tricks of the trade to train his brain to be ready. Now, that hasn't quite shown up to help in playoffs because the second point is Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is built different, plain and simple. The work he puts in is incredible 
And while I don't understand why he's with Brittany, uh, I'm not sure they'll make it per se, but they seem to have a close relationship. Kirk Cousins and his wife being very close. It was cool to get that behind the scenes of family life, what it takes. Marcus Mariota, you saw he was in two clips because he was a quitter and a, a, a BF crybaby. So by Mariota. But Mahomes is just something different, dude. Plain and simple. So, so I agree, and Ron, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come to you. I'm gonna come to you last night. I'm telling you, coach, you gotta watch this documentary because it's, it's just when you, especially as a coach, to see what goes in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday before they take the field on Sunday. But here, here's so biggest surprise to me, uh, Kirk Cousins. This dude is an awesome dude. How can you not root for this dude? He is, and you know, I never really gave two thoughts to the guy. Honestly, I'm like, oh, Kirk Cousins is a quarterback. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to bet against them. That's okay. I'm, I'm going to leave them out. But how could you not? Re if look, I'm a Niners fan, and then I'm rooting for the Jets after the Niners this year. And if the Vikings win the Super Bowl, I will not be disappointed one bit at all because I got to root for Kirk Cousins. I I was surprised just at at this dude his whole story the way he lives his life everything that the guy stands for now ron i, I kind of know your answer to this question because ron wrote a tremendous article that should have dropped like now or a few minutes ago on bleacherbrothers.com uh about his big takeaway but ron not so much your takeaway what was the biggest what surprised you the most when you watched the the day-to-day -day of three different quarterbacks as they went through the entire season last year one of the biggest things that actually got me, and I could go for hours here and talk about this show, and I'm only halfway through it because of the fact that, you know, I have basically, you know, this job plus my other job plus my other job. My biggest thing has been when I sit here and I look, and anybody who knows me knows I have a, I had a massive animosity about Kirk Cousins, about exactly what happened with him. But I am... I can genuinely say I am rooting for Kirk Cousins. I am rooting for Kirk Cousins. I am with AJ on this one. I'm rooting for Cousins to actually win a Super Bowl because the fact is that somebody, the guy who built his house, already had a Super Bowl stump posted up, ready to go for this guy to basically sit here and actually bring that Super Bowl trophy to Minnesota. I need to. I need that franchise has had it. I'm. Um, granted, I was a little disappointed in what and how their season ended last year. I'm not going. I'm not going to lie about that. But I will say this much. Contrary to what Rico has to say, and quite frankly, we've all know that Rico is just salty as hell because of the fact that he's he's Arizona and they just quit regardless. Um, I am going to give props to Marcus Mariota because regardless of what happened in Atlanta, Mariota had to that point of where he started focusing his, his mentality on trying to be a good father and literally going through that. And me being a parent, and maybe this is what's keeping Rico a little bit on the back burner because he hasn't had kids that he knows of. The fact is, is that the one thing that surprised me about this one was the fact that all these guys have lives off that football field. And during the day, the day, the day, they all have different ways of being able to actually get themselves game ready for everything between Mariota, Mariota Chef, between Mahomes, Mahomes is trainer, even for the fact that Kirk Cousins has that point where he has a group of body people that do work on him to try to get him to that point where he can actually get out there and show out. I'm got, I, I'm honestly going to tell you, I had that point where I was actually watching this video right here and I was showing my daughter, my youngest daughter this, and she was trying to figure out in her heads what they were talking about. It's almost like you need a Rosetta Stone quarterback for half the language you were hearing. And Rico, you know what episode I'm talking about. It's the one where they're going over the way they do the plays and the uh, talks and the chants and everything else to try to basically put it into that point of that circle. Hearing that for the first first time since high school was was like a big was like a big deal for me. Let me stop you. So so coach, face value, because you haven't seen the show. You get you get your choice. Mahomes, cousins, Mariota. In order, how would you pick them? Mahomes, Cousins, Mariota. 
All right. So I'm well, gonna... I, I actually have a question for Captain. So Shoot. in terms of Mariota, okay. had the season been going well, do you think that he would have quit on his team? No. He's a I don't think he would have. Do you but think at that he same time? Used... But at that same time, when you're not mentally 100% there, because Mariota had a hard enough time as it was. I mean, he was expecting he was expecting his first child in December, which in any and even Mahomes could even sit here and, and attest to this. When you basically are becoming a parent for the very first time, it does kind of throw you off just a little bit either this way or this way. Because I don't believe that Mahomes, before his daughter was born, I believe he won a Super Bowl that year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but, but, I'm, but I'm sure he was still locked in. See, so here's so here's where and, and on topic but off topic. Of here here's the problem: when you're an NFL quarterback and you are paid millions and millions and millions of dollars, you have the responsibility. But this is not just for an NFL quarterback. This is for every single individual in life. Coach over there has got 40, 50 guys counting on him day in, day out, week after week, month after month now. But Coach has got stuff going on in his life. It's not where he just wakes up every day and everything is perfect. And it's like, okay, let me go coach football and take care of my guys. Well, Ron, you got stuff going on. Rico's got stuff I got going on. But you know what? You show up and you do what's required of you because people are counting on you. Marcus Mariota did not do that. That's the problem with society today. Too many people don't do that. There's an excuse. There's a reason, and it's all BS. You do what you got to do. You take care of what you got to take care of. The one thing I will give to Marcus Mariota is even if he had sat here and walked away, even if he had thrown in that towel, even if he did that. Which he did. Mm -hmm. The one thing I can say about Marcus Mariota is that he ain't Antonio Brown. Because it'll always go back to the way Antonio Brown quit out on his team. And he did that in the middle of a game. He did that when his team was losing. So the so the fact is that I can understand why people will be a little bit saucy about Mario. I'm still going to be a Mario supporter because of the fact that I'm a, I'm a Pac North guy. I watched this kid, this kid, kid in college. I think he is poised for something. I just think he needs to write coaches just to do it. And yes, Art, Arthur Smith, not going to lie. Is a is a great coach. I'm not gonna lie. I think the Falcons are gonna turn around and make it an impact this season because I feel like they and the Panthers will be competing, be competing for it. And I think the Saints are probably gonna be the ones that end up winning it. But I feel like they're gonna at least compete for that South. Yeah, but the, true, in this, the Capos could win that division. No, the true medal and the true test of a man. The Capo, showing the Capos, up, Capos not could, could honestly you. win any division right now. The South, mm-hmm. AFC South. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, Wonderful. Now. No, go ahead. No, He's no, done. no, go ahead. He's done. Go ahead. There we go. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Let's just go to the next topic. Come on. No, right. I went here. Let me, let me. All right. Here's something that I took away from this show. Patrick Mahomes is incredibly gifted. This is all natural, but Patrick Mahomes is all about Patrick Mahomes. Every every time, big play, big score, big this, and you saw it in the clip that we that we showed the trailer. I'm here all night. I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. And I didn't dig that about Patrick Mahomes because I doesn't do anything, we do. And that's something that I took away with Patrick Mahomes is that he's a very me first sort of dude. He's that, humble. That was my, that was, he's humble. I don't, I don't take him as humble. I, right. I take him the complete opposite. I, I took him as it's all about him. And that's this generation of football players, though. I have guys that do the same way. I'm him. I'm here all night. You can't stop me. That's just how young kids are now. Yeah, it's 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 not it's not right, man. It's it, part of the it, game to be that to be that good and that talented. Mahomes is on a level that we never heard of. We saw it in the Super Bowl. We saw it during the season. This is a guy I pretty much sat here and won a Super Bowl with, and respectfully to Kurt Angle, but he won with, won it practically with a broken freaking ankle. So the fact is that Mahomes is that guy and yeah, but, i gotta be honest he when, he made the show and he made it good when did you ever hear brady say i did this when did you ever hear say joe montana say i did this when have you ever even heard aaron Rodgers say i did this and um that would be probably the game that they played against the bears i own you i own you this entire season let's be realistic we're not even going to bring aaron Rodgers to this because he hadn't proven a damn thing to me yet 
Ron, Ron, you wrote a great article where you took away and you didn't mention it right now is the women, the women behind these quarterbacks that, that, that keep them grounded, that, that, that keep them going. Uh, it's a great article. We, we got to move on from the topic as we have, you know, we got coach sitting here and he didn't, he didn't watch the show and we kind of sprung this on him, but, uh, and we got to get to NFL and we're, we're, you know, we're running out of time, but uh, there's a great article. Ron had a perspective, which I didn't really think about was the women behind the quarterbacks, how supportive they are. Um, where would these guys be without them? It's an absolutely awesome show. Yeah. Thank you. Uncle Mayo for turning me onto it. Um, it was, I'll even give you credit on that. Right there. Thanks, 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 Mayo. Well, all right. So tomorrow night it starts. All right. <clears throat> We got coach. You're a Dolphins fan, yes? That's correct. All right. Ooh. You, got you got a Rams fan. You got a an Arizona Cardinals fan. He doesn't like to shout <laughs> that out loud. And uh, I'll, I'll let you know what team I'm actually rooting for the week before the Super Bowl. Okay. Um, that's that's how, I, that's how I do it. That's why I have so many jerseys. Um, Rico, what are you what are you looking for this year? What what is your What's that? Football. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. All right, Ron. What I'm looking for forward to is honestly the clock resets. Every team, every fan has literally been saying, this is our year, this is our year, this is our year. Yes, I, mean, I can't even trash the Cowboys fans or the Raiders fans for saying saying because they do it every year. But this is a fresh clock. Who has what it takes to be able to sit here and dethrone Mahomes, there's no Brady. Rogers in a new home. I kind of, I kind of like. I'm looking forward to this season just because of the fact that somewhere down this road, the champ is going to end up being whoever has the most heart, the most tenacity, and they're keep their players the healthiest. And for the love of God, the ankle, the kneecaps. If Detroit wants to do something, they got to pretty much go right out of the bat starting tomorrow night. And with Kelsey pretty much out for that game, they're going to have to step up and show up. Coach, how's how's this season going to play out in both in both the AFC and the NFC? And they don't just say the Dolphins, the Dolphins, the Dolphins, because that's oh. like saying Mariota, Mariota, Mariota. <laughs> no, I think um, that's more a Tua, Tua, Tua. I think the AFC champion at the end of the season is going to be the the Bengals. I think Joey Berg gets over that. You know, that hump beats Patrick Mahomes. And the NFC, I don't even know. Um, right, well, let me bring it back for a minute to the AFC, all right? Your Dolphins, your Jets. Buffalo's been sort of knocking for a couple of years. Um, how, how is Rodgers and the Jets going to go? Because let's go to another documentary, Hard Knocks. All, all I heard with Rodgers is that Rodgers is no good. Rodgers doesn't get along with anybody. Rodgers is a me, me, me sort of dude. I had a totally different takeaway from watching Hard Knocks. And I don't think anybody could have watched Hard Knocks and not have been excited or optimistic about the Jets. How, how, and you're going to be there Monday night. How, how are you expecting the Jets to kind of gel with Aaron Rodgers? And what do you think is going to happen there? Because their defense is, their defense is like Mike Tyson lights out. Their defense is great. Their offense is good, but their offensive line is their weakness right now. It's going to come down to how how well their line holds up. So who's going to take that division? And can Tua make it through week three without getting a concussion? I hope not. <laughs> you hope not? <laughs> I'm not a Tua fan. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I didn't see that one coming. That was uh, left field. I think Buffalo wins the division. And what happens with does does Casey have a uh, does Casey come out of the gate slow? Do they have Super Bowl hangover? Does it end up being Casey and Cincinnati in the in the AFC Championship game? I don't know. I mean, you've had so much shuffling going around. Um, you know, does Tua stay healthy and does he does he pick up where he left off before he got hurt? You know, they go on a run and he's statistically one of the better quarterbacks in the league at that time. Um, does the Jets, do they gel? Does their line hold up? And does Rodgers absolutely make that team much better and get over that hump? One second. Tears. I thought we were doing like some, uh, 
crazy fist pumping kind of music going there, but my bad. But go ahead. No, I have a, a German Shepherd puppy that likes to make noise all the time. Um, like my dog. Okay. I, I honestly think that Buffalo is the most complete team right now in the AFC. Um, you know, the AFC East. Um, the AFC South is garbage. I think you're gonna have. So you back to what you said about Anthony Richardson, Rico. Uh, Richardson is actually probably one of the best quarterback talents that has come into the NFL in a long time. He just didn't have the coaching. He's he's gone off of natural ability. Now he's at the NFL level. He might not do well with Indianapolis, but if he goes to a a, a team that actually takes the time and develops him, that kid could be phenomenal. Hmm. Uh, strong arm, extremely athletically gifted. I mean, the, the speed, the size. Uh, I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. He might not. Have, I don't think he's going to have a phenomenal season this rookie year, but he's going to have some great games. Um, I think Kyle Trask takes over as a starting quarterback for the Bucks this year. Those are my my little predictions. Is that like a consolation prize in Tampa? And, and I mean, what happens, <laughs> what happens out west, Rico? I mean, you you don't you're you're a diehard. You bleed Cardinal red, sadly. Um, but what, what's what, what are we? Because on the East Coast, the East Coast guys don't pay attention to the West Coast. I mean, they do, but they don't. They're not as invested. And obviously, Ron is is way out there on the West Coast. But you know, I, I want to hear from you. How do, how does the NFC shake out? Is San Francisco? They've been knocking. Their time is their window is closing. Is this it for San Francisco? Is Brock is Brock Purdy the uh, the answer? It's uh, San Francisco's division to lose. Which they most likely will. I mean, I, 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 I'm sorry, Rico, but... You go right ahead, Ron. It's There's... Kyle Shanahan. It's Kyle Shanahan. The guy's been a dumpster fire since he choked in the first Super Bowl that he played in. It's not even a... Not, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm a Rams guy, but even I'm sitting here looking at that like, if the Niners want to win a Super Bowl... They need to get rid of Kyle Shanahan completely. He is not his father's son. Not in this case. All right. Let me go around and ask this. Biggest, Rico, what, the biggest disappointment. There's a lot of expectations, and there's some teams that have no hope at all. Who Who's the biggest disappointment this year coming up? Mm. You can't say the Cardinals because that's... The Packers... Are there high expectations for the Packers right now? If you're They're high on Jordan Love. This is true. Coach, what do you think? Biggest disappointment this year? Something that it's something that the, the talking heads are saying this is gonna happen, but you're like, nah, I just I don't see it. I I'm drawing a blank on that. Honestly. Ron. Brian, what's what's going to disappoint? If the Broncos don't at least finish with a winning record, because you got Wilson, you got Sean Payton, you got the coach you wanted, you got the quarterback you wanted. Now let's see it at your step of man. I'm not. I, the fact is, is that if the Broncos don't have at least a winning record by the end of the season, I feel like that's a bigger disappointment than Jordan Love and the Packers. So what what happened? Anybody see what happened in the last few days? Uh, with Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. Anybody read about this or see this? Rico, you must have saw this, no? Mm-mm. Uh, Sean little, Payton telling the people... Spat. Hey, hey, hang on, Ron. What, what's that, Coach? Sean Payton telling um, Wilson he doesn't care about him kissing the babies. That Was that what you're talking about? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I saw a little bit about it. Yeah, they, they, I think they, that causes they, a lot of problems for your quarterback and your head coach. Um, yeah. First couple of weeks is going to cause a lot of issues. Here's the, I, I, here's the, here's like the biggest thing I think with Russell Wilson. You got brought in from Seattle. You had won a Super Bowl. You beat this very team to get that Super Bowl. You are a half hype built around you as a quarterback of a Super Bowl championship team. And this 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 is a Broncos team that's been trying to get back there since Peyton pretty much rolled off in the sunset. Sean Payton is a no nonsense, no BS kind kind of coach, which is what probably what made him successful in the time that he was in New Orleans. The fact is, is that Russell has to make it to the point where he's not his wife. His wife can 
hug the babies and say hi to the fans and that kind of thing. Russell needs to win now because I know that Broncos, that I know Broncos country. Broncos country is a bunch of bloodthirsty mofos, no matter who tells you that. And it starts on week one when they play the Raiders. If they can pretty much see it have to the point where they're actually making the Raiders, they actually expose the Raiders for who they are, expect fireworks on it. But the, when it comes to the Broncos, they have to win, and they got to win often. And as much as people want to get mad at Sean Payton for calling out Russell Wilson, is your year you're going to be Mr. A, Mr. Unlimited or you're going to be Mr. Unlimited Diarrhea? You have to pick which one it's going to be coming into week one. I, I, we want to hear from the from the chat room and the audience, too. If anyone has a, a prediction, what you're looking forward to, who's – and I'm going to go – if anybody wants to answer this, I know Ron will. Uh, who's, your, who's your Super Bowl pick right now? Uh, but anybody, the, the floor is literally open uh, for knockers. Um, Coach, I'm going to give you a second to think about it. Ron, who's your Super Bowl pick right now? I'm going to say we're going to have a back-to-back. I think Kansas City – if they stay healthy, Kansas City wins a second straight Super Bowl. I don't see playing. many teams that actually are doing it. I don't even see the Jets pulling it off as much as Aaron Rodgers wants to be a Joe Namath wannabe. Rico, we're in Vegas week before the Super Bowl. Who are we talking about? The Chiefs. Bangor. Coach, coach, uh, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a hint that neither one of them realized. Two teams playing the Super Bowl. There's actually two of them. Um, so they they both have the Chiefs playing by themselves. Um, <laughs> who, who's, in, who's in the Super Bowl? Who's in the Super Bowl, Coach? Um, I think it's going to be Bengals Eagles. Really? So I okay, Bengals Eagles. I'm hey, Eagles represent the NFC. I mean, feel like Eagles are looking for payback because they know they came close last year. They're probably one of the closest teams that actually came to beating the Chiefs. So, I feel like the I feel like if anybody other than the Chiefs are going to win it, I feel like the Eagles are. Oh, you so, really? You here, brought here, this Dodger here, fan in there? Yeah, 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 yeah. So here's my take, and you can say, "Oh, you're just the Niners fan, and you're a crybaby, whatever you want to say." Um, the only reason the Eagles were in the Super Bowl is because Brock Purdy's arm gave out in the NFC Championship game. They were not going to win that game. San oh, Francisco, I agree. San Francisco hung in that game for three quarters with no quarterback none true they didn't throw a pass they had no quarterback and they hung in that game and their defense just wore down in the fourth quarter and we should make I, I may take offense to that that's 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 exactly what happened <laughs> don juan what are you yes, looking sir. forward to what's going to happen uh who are we talking about in february the beginning of february i'm going way off the board here and being a little sentimental, I'm going to pick the Vikings against the Bills. And for this reason, both of those teams have lost, I think, at least four times in the Super Bowl without winning. So I think I think the, the Cosmos or whatever it is aligns itself properly. These two teams get in, at least one of them will finally get off the Snyder. I don't know which one, but I think it's about time. 60 years, they, they got to get things got to get it right for one of those teams. I think it happens this year. I, I, I wouldn't would, even be mad at that. I, I'd have to root for Kirk Cousins. Absolutely positively. I wouldn't. Yeah, be I wouldn't. It, what What are we going to be disappointed in? You got You got anything else? Anything we're going to be disappointed in? Biggest surprise? In the NFL? Yeah. I still, you know, the, the winner and still champ will be the San Diego slash LA slash whatever you want to call them, Chargers. Yeah, you know, that coach that they have is he's a boy genius, but can't win. You know, there's certain certain uh, uh, traditional things you have to stick to, and this guy tries to be too different, too avant-garde. You got to stick to the basics, particularly when you have all that talent. He's wasted a lot of opportunities to get that team further along in the playoffs, if not to the Super Bowl. And I don't see anything changing there this year. I think they're a marginal playoff team if they even get there, but I would be shocked to see them miss the playoffs all together. Mm. All right, Don Juan, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna move on. I got more knockers that want to give their uh, give us their take. I appreciate you coming on tonight. Thanks for watching. All right. 
All right. So I'm going to bring in Joe Q. And I, obviously, Joe Q is going to say the Eagles, the Eagles, the Eagles. And then um... <laughs> he's a Philly yeah. guy. You got to give him credit. Oh. What uh, up? What's happening, Joe? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So what's uh, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking for a great season here. I think it's an Eagles revenge tour. And uh, I'm looking at some very interesting football this year. And you think the Eagles are going to make it back to the Super Bowl? I mean, I got I'm rooting the- for them to make it back. Do you think that they're going to make it back? Eagles will win the Super Bowl. I, I got the Eagles, for what it's worth, in third place in the division. Who you got, got above them? The Cowboys and the Giants. Babe, bring me my scotch. Who are they playing? <laughs> AJ's going crazy. Who are they playing in the Super Bowl? Jacksonville. Ooh. Jacksonville. I think. The forgotten team. I think Doug Peterson gets revenge on Navy Breeze. The student beats the student beats the teacher. Hmm. Not a bad pick. And Jacksonville's thirty to one right now to win it all. So how confident are you that Minnesota could possibly could possibly win a Super Bowl? Do you think it's either Minnesota's year or Buffalo's year at this time? Well, he just said no. it's the Eagles or Jacksonville. I- Minnesota, Minnesota won't even make the playoffs. Really? And neither who's will the, the division. And neither will the Lions. How's the North? Who, who, who's taking the division in the North? Well, that's I got the Bears at nine and eight. That that whole division is nine and eight, nine and eight, eight and nine, eight and nine. You just open a can of worms that Don Wise is ready to open up on because you know Don Wise is a huge Bears hater, <laughs> or and, he's just a Fields hater. And Green Bay is going to be the team you don't want to face in the playoffs. They're not gonna they're not gonna do well in the first half of the year. Towards the end of the season, they start picking off teams one by one, and they barely get in the final week. Coach, what do you think about that? I mean, it's very possible. Uh, Shit. Uh, Uncle Reek, what is going to happen with, with Brock Purdy this year? Is he as good as he looked? Mm. We'll have to see. Um, okay. We have Christian Ayuk right. and, and Debo Samuel. It's almost guaranteed. It's like you don't need to be that good. As long as you got those two healthy, run with it. Plus, yeah, Bosa just to. resigned. Joe, Joe, tell everybody where they can where they can hear you and where they can see you. Uh, I will be on um, Tuesday and Thursdays. Usually, I got a couple of Fridays coming up uh, in a couple of weeks because I'm on vacation. Um, Tuesday and Thursday, Philly guy speaks, um, and there's an audio only that comes out Sunday night, Monday morning, and uh, we'll we'll see. And uh, also. Uncle Ernie did not do well last month. Mm. Now you can win them all. All right. Thanks for coming on, Joe. Thank you. All right. Well, Ron, uh, first coach, thanks. You came on at the last minute. Coach um, Coach hooked us up for, for this week at FAU. I was in so need. So the jerseys, though, Coach. I was in need of an, of an entourage, and Coach got us an entourage this week at, at FAU. So we're gonna have some you really good awesome contact with, with a bunch you? of capital players um this week at FAU. Um any any anything you want to plug, say, talk about capos, where can we where can we go? How can we support? Uh when's the season start? Uh so the season regular season will start in February. It's uh last Saturday of February, first game. Uh if you want to follow us, we have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, they're all pretty much at Palm Beach Capos. So it's uh, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, at Palm Beach Capos. YouTube is at Capos Football. Uh, we have previous games on the YouTube there from 8-Man. Um, support us. I mean, just follow our journey. You know, these guys, they put it all on the line every week. They all have jobs. They come out. They play. They get hurt. They they do it for the love of the game. Some of them are trying to go to college. Some of them are trying to go to a pro level. Um, but semi-pro football is is a, a very slept-on level of football. 
And there is a ton of talent with guys that could very well be in the NFL. I got to ask, though, Coach, before H.A. continues on. Oh, you goody. know that there's, you know, the XFL that's coming up in, coming up in about the same time. I'm, you I'm sending a couple of guys to a showcase in Orlando next month. That's kind of what I want you to know. Because like, the fact is, is that I feel like Capos, XFL, NFL, I kind of like that. I kind of like that conversation. Coach, I got one last question for you. You're yes, holding sir. tryouts October 1st. October 1st. Marcus Mariota shows up. Do you immediately <laughs> send him packing or do you at least let him try out? I'll let him try out. Come on. Coach, Coach, nap, rag 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 and we're going to be, you're going to be, you're going to be reporting for us on Monday, on Monday night. night from New Jersey, right? Hold on. We're what if, videos and all kinds of other fun stuff. What if his oh, wife is pregnant again? Hey, 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 Rico, just because you haven't had a wife does not mean you can knock somebody who has one. Mm-hmm. Brent, thanks uh, for coming on, man. Going to go on the contract. We've got to work it out. <laughs> have a good night, y'all. Even right, my dog you. is laughing. Good God. All right. And that's, Ron, that's an answer. Ron, here's your uh, here's your plug right here for what. So if you, if you enjoy Captain Ron, if you follow Captain Ron, if this is the first experience of Captain Ron, Here's where you can My see apologies. Captain Ron right here. Jack. Yeah. Flip it. Surprise. Four. Three. Two. Drop. The curtain, my peoples is working. You peeping, Tom. Y'all need to stop lurking. You spying, talking. I ain't cock blocking. You don't know the time. You watch, but stop clocking. So we switch it. Hit some other bitches. None of y'all business. Who we want to chill with? And we flip shit. Steadily Boy. afflicted. Readily equipped with shit to get you twisted. Oh, you missed it. It's a felony, a sickness. The melody ridiculous. You yelling who your click is. What? But we don't really give a shit, kid. Shit. Drinks our hands. We land in double fisted. Uh, a and P is the non fictitious. Pray to me, and I'll grant you your wishes. Yes. Mrs. Milfs and mistresses you, It's not a diss, your bitch That's It's just true It's an ode to nightlife uh, Stain your brain with a load of white stripe Now, now you feel where I'm coming from Come and give the drummer some uh, 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 I'm gonna laugh at y'all <laughs> Why you standing looking for Holding up the wall But I ain't mad at y'all Nah Cause I'm an alcoholic all right, Ron, when, when, when can we see your podcast? When can we see you, Ron? Hello, is nobody hearing me? I hear you. Okay. This guy can't hear me either. <laughs> All right, well, right, check your local listings for, uh, for the aftermath, where they go every week. Um, with, over the aftermath of the previous week's game. So, uh, Rick, you don't look happy. You still get the hat on. You still have the part when the strike is over. How um, But I'm just, how can I l- not look happy? I've s- been smiling the whole time. Yeah, I can read your body language. Mm. No means no. That's all we can see on your shirt. Um, <laughs> How pumped are you to do this thing with Ted Brooks? Ted Brooks knows what he's talking about. He does. He's legit. So I'm looking forward to digging in on the numbers and uh, helping him help me save myself from me. Help you save yourself from you. All right. I got you. Are you going to listen to him, though? Are you going to take his advice? I I wrote down. So I wrote down every single... Every single pick, and I mean, you, you, you love, you both, you both love Kansas. Uh, you were both pretty much non-committal on Coach Prime. Uh, you guys both love Old Miss, and that was your lock was Old Miss. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mississippi State, Ted loved them. You loved Oregon. Mm-hmm. Uh, you loved Oklahoma State. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got you love Kansas City. We're in the NFL where Ted was going with the Lions. Mm-hmm. Ted loves the money line on Atlanta, minus 145. Um, you like Jacksonville over Indy. And um, you love Minnesota. 
and uh, Ted likes the Bucks, and I've got the Vikings and Seattle. I, I don't know why you guys are not jumping all over Seattle. Seattle just looks like that. There's always one game when I look at these. Like, I'm not professional anything. I, I am professional some things, but, w you know, when it comes to this, obviously none of us are professionals other than Ted. Um, but every week when I look at games, I just look for that one game that jumps out. And most of the time it's, it's, it, it happens. And you're, you're right. I, I do want to circle back to prime. As you said, I'm non-committal on him or we were non-committal. It's going to be a tough game. Uh, Don Juan brings up a very good point of why I didn't like his uh, post game. Uh, Prime failed to mention that there were plenty of black folks who criticized him for leaving Jackson State. So maybe not everybody that's white is his enemy and maybe not everybody that's black is his friend. Why we shouldn't look at things through the lens of color at all times. Is it possible that Dion is just so calculated that? Yeah, and, and he didn't calculate it. To, but he didn't he wanted know. to pander to that audience. It's why Ron has Black Lives Matter hanging up in his background. You know, he panders to that audience, and they come out in droves. So hey, it's all good. But the point I was going to make is that he didn't have to pander to anyone. They won. That's all he exactly. Had to do. That's all you have to do. Why, for somebody who you think is as calculated as Prime is, and I think is as calculated, I think he let the emotions of that moment get the best of him, and he had a slip of tongue. Because thus far, Prime has not been outspoken in those areas. You know, he's been pretty neutral in terms of not turning people away. And I think that the emotion of the moment got the best of him. And, hey, he that's what he thought in the moment, and that's fine. He's allowed to. He's Coach Prime. He could say whatever he wants. All I'm saying is if I'm looking at it as a recruit, let's say I happen to be a big white corn Fred boy from the Midwest, and I hear that, I'm like, oh, is he one of those kind of coaches? Maybe I'm going to go a different direction. So I asked the question, maybe I didn't ask it the right way. Maybe you were just um, not feeling the vibe at the time, but I mean, football, what, what are you looking, what are you looking forward to the most with football kicking back up? Because th to me, it seems like football just ended and now it's back already. I not know. me. I have been waiting patiently for football to come back. Uh, the doldrums of the summer are just, almost unwatchable. Unfortunately, the Cubs have been winning, so it's been somewhat worthwhile. But football coming back is like lifeblood. You know, I love the fall season. I love when it starts to get a little nip in the air. The leaves change. People's attitudes change in Arizona. Once it starts to get less hot, they get less emotionally uh, distraught, chaotic so to say, in football is a lifeblood of America. What I'm looking forward to is seeing, obviously, what the Cardinals do and look like. I know that we have a new coach. We have question marks around Kyler Murray. We're already shopping him. You know, there was an article that came out from coaches saying where they thought the tiers of quarterbacks were. They placed him in the third category i think he i think he wants to do well i don't know if gannon wants him i just don't know so that's number one number two i'm interested to see how all these uh new moves play out jalen ramsey in miami what does that do to the defense what is a a coach an offensive coordinator like the one Baltimore brought in over from Georgia, Todd Munkin. What does he do for that offense and Lamar Jackson in the tight ends? Will the Bills finally be able to get over the hump? 
you know, I've been pro Bills for quite some time. And after watching that doc about Mahomes, I just don't know how anybody beats that guy. He's a cold blooded killer. And <laughs> that's just all there is to it. Hey, why is no one talking about Odell Beckham? What's going on there? I, I don't know. I'm in the dark. But you would think that there'd be a little bit more noise with Odell. Like, even in fantasy, I looked. He's, he's like, it costs nothing this week to to play Odell. You mean old Dell Beckham? I guess. Yeah, Whatever. that's I mean, why he's old. He's yesterday's news. Okay. I, I don't see him. I see Zay Flowers having more yards than him this year, which is why I took him in my fantasy draft. I think that kid out of BC is going to be the best rookie receiver uh, coming out or coming into the NFL this year. So uh, Lamar Jackson has some weapons around him. We'll see what he does. Uh, would it be cool if old Dell got back into his form? Yeah, I think that he got his ring. He's coming back just to collect another paycheck, and he's got the itch. But is he really – ready to put in that extra work that it takes to be elite. I don't believe so. And how do you think uh, A-Rod is going to do with the Jets? Did, Fantastic. Did you, did you watch Hard Knocks? Yeah, all of it. I think, uh, I think the best thing to come out of Aaron Rodgers being on the Jets is the development of Zach. Because he can be the future of that team if he learns from Rodgers. Rodgers has got two years. Their line is doo-doo. And Aaron's going to get pissed real fast, not having the likes of a Bulaga blocking for him. So watch when that line breaks down and he starts getting his uh, rear end kicked, his little hiney spanked. Uh, he's going to get on players, receivers, and the image of Aaron Rodgers that we got in Hard Knocks is going to be very different. Uh, he's going to go back to Diva Aaron. And it. I don't see a scenario where he lasts longer than two years for the Jets. Does he text uh, pictures of himself to female Jet employees like another former Green Bay quarterback that has come over to New Jersey to play? No, because Florida State doesn't have any Jen Sturgers walking around. Shout out to the cowgirl hats. Um, now you get my joke. Um, yeah, there's uh, the rules are very much different now. Uh, but are they? Because last time I checked, Deshaun Watson is lining up this Sunday. Let's just remind the audience that Deshaun Watson raped over 21 girls that is raped with a capital R. It's a Sorry, if we're going to be real, let's be real, okay? If we're going to talk about nudie pics going to uh, the Jen Sturgers of the world, we have to talk about Deshaun Watson and how is he going to play? You know, the Browns are such a big question mark because – they have the talent on the defensive side of the ball. They have a top three running back in Nick Chubb, one of the best. Will Deshaun Watson be that missing piece for the Browns to get past the wild card round of the NFL? Or will his past crimes cause him to be another failed story of the NFL? So I think I see how the future of the show is going to go. I'm going to make a little joke about something and just needle you mm -hmm. into getting very upset. And it, why is it all the African African American players that are upsetting you? You get prime time you're upset with. You have the uh, the black rapist that you're upset with. You have old Dell Beckham that you're upset with. Oh um, goody! <laughs> I'm so glad that you could uh, paint that hat. Are, when did you become a liberal? Is that a new thing? Did you vote for Biden? I, I, I don't remember. You don't remember if you voted for Biden? That would make sense. Biden doesn't remember if he voted for Biden. So what's the difference? That's the beauty of it all. You know, at the end of the day, you can just say, eh, whatever, whatever decision I made, you know, wash my hands of it. Oh, 
he's he's messed up. I will say this: it is nice to be able to talk again. But you only had an issue with the black panel person that we had on tonight. It's very odd. I mean, the cowboy hat, the big cross in the background there. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm starting to starting to see a pattern here, man. Yep, you gotta know that it, at the end of the day, white is right. In that shirt, we can only see the no, but the rest of that shirt, I'm sure it says no. I'm sure it says lives matter below it, doesn't it? Is that what it says? No lives matter. Yes, folks. Once again, if you're following this segment, uh, I think what my friend is trying to do here is called satire. Um, I could see how it would be easy to paint me with a brush of racism. But then again, I think everybody is racist in modern America today. Let's be honest. It's all in good fun, people. And hey, so you do fantasy. Do you do weekly fantasy? Because you know that there is the Bruno Nation weekly fantasy contest on DraftKings, and it's going to open up to the public. So anyone on DraftKings can get in next week. And we expect that to go to like 100 or 200 people. And it's 10 bucks to get in. Winner takes all the money. So who's dude, Bruno? Is uh, Bruno the guy that Popeye fought? No, we don't talk about Bruno. Yeah, yeah that was, no, that was Brutus. And then Brutus. we don't talk about Bruno is from that, uh, that play about George Washington or Abraham Lincoln or somebody. Um, but no, Tony Bruno, it's the Bruno nation. Fantasy He's... football. Oh, the Tony Madden, Bruno. The King oh. Of Radio Row. this is the opportunity to play fantasy football. And Tony's going to bring in some ex NFL play. I haven't seen him on our show yet. So I, I didn't know that he was still around. <laughs> yeah, he's he's still around and he's kicking and he's doing great. And yeah, he's a, big, he's a big part of what we got going on here. So um no so way. tomorrow night. And when do we start? Do we start tomorrow night with Ted Brooks? Or are you starting next Thursday night? We're doing next Thursday. Uh we want to give it a little time to settle in, maybe cut a few promos, let the people really get worked up into a frenzy over it. Gotcha. Well, I'm sure Ron will be there. Nice um, hammer, by the way. Good grief. Nice what? Hammer. What hammer? That massive oh, flood you just threw in. Yeah. You do what it you got to do. Taste. You do what you got to do to get through the season. You know what I mean? The long yeah, run. you do. And season's um, back, baby. Can't wait. Read the room. Fridays? Fridays, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 p.m. Pacific. Me and... My good man, Mark Smith, uh, if you didn't tune in last broadcast, he let us know that the Joe Biden audio tapes will be coming out within two weeks. So stay tuned. Audio tapes linking Biden to his crime boss syndicate family, whatever you want to call it, linking him to. Some sort of lascivious deed will come out, and that will probably be the final nail in the Joe Biden coffin. So when that day comes, uh, we've already started talking about who the potential Democrat candidate will be. Uh, you want to talk about a shallow pool? Yikes. Kamala and that bozo from California, Newsom. Uh, those are the top two candidates to replace Biden right now. So how is Kamala atop anything? Uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be the guy that got he get, get recalled or he he almost got recalled in California. Uh, on, yeah, he almost did, but you know, uh, people are stupid. You know, that's just one thing that I've learned from the American public is. Uh, there's never a lack of stupidity when it comes to voting. It's one of the reasons why I think there should be either age requirements or that we should have to take a civics test like we make immigrants getting their citizenship because not enough people understand the repercussions of what a vote means. Now, I see uh, my man DW, Don Juan, put Stacey Abrams. That's Stacey Abrams, a.k.a. Selena Montgomery, if you don't know about the uh, pretend governor from Atlanta, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, she also moonlights as a 
sex writer in her free time, those romance novels, uh, really steamy stuff. Murtaugh did that on uh, Lethal Weapon movies. That's how he had all his money in uh, Lethal Weapon 4. He, him or his wife, they were writing sex novels. Yeah. I remember that. Murtaugh's a, uh, Murtaugh's a hero. Danny Glover, yeah, maybe not so much. Yeah. Mel Gibson is a hero, though. And so was Martin Riggs, in my book, anyway. Of course. Oh. All right. He's well, the racist I- now. <laughs> oh, and on the Republican side... Uh, Kumar, is, is he is he the candidate or or, or are you oh, against Indians running it. for? Uh... Is he the candidate. Give me a break. He's Trump 2.0. Vivek Ramaswamy is nothing more than tr- Trump 2.0. He's an outsider that's going to say outsider things, and he's going to rile up a certain portion of the Republican base, but does he actually have a chance? No, because no Republican does other than Trump. And when Trump is out, DeSantis, if Trump gets taken out, but that's a story for another show. Rick, enjoy your weekend. Absolutely. I appreciate you. Absolutely. um, I can't wait to cover you in Mayo or watch Ted Brooks cover you in Mayo on Radio Row. Boy, oh boy. I can just count the days. Have a good night, everybody. We'll be back next Wednesday. Adios. Adios.